All right, guys, so today on our YouTube channel, check it out on Carbon Car Systems. We're going to show you how to do this, which is add remote start to your factory remote for all your Hondas out there. And literally, is a plug and play 10 minute install for you guys. We've made this kit really, really easy. We're going to step you through the installations, but as you can see, really easy to start it and cool down your car in summer. So you can actually take that over and drive it away or add some long range remotes and even a security system if you wanted. But Stepping you through that 10 minute install for anything with a Honda Civic, Accord, CRV, HRV, any of those automatic vehicles out there, simple plug and play kit we designed for you guys. Good afternoon, welcome back down to Carbon Car Systems. Now, today we are going to be showing you this. This is our new remote start do it yourself kit for the Honda vehicles out there. Now, we have two different versions of this kit that will suit almost every single Honda from 2005 right through the current. Um, we're going to show you today how easy this is to install. It's a plug and play kit and you can do it yourself with very, very minimal tools and it's a very quick process. I mean, we're going to do a Honda CRV today. We're going to show you that. It's going to take us probably about 10 minutes to do, but we're going to run you through what you're going to need and how you're going to do it. Now, this will suit other vehicles like the Civic, the Accord, um, CRV, HRV. Anything automatic, like I said, 2005 onwards, and they're very, very similar installations. The vehicle config is slightly different, but programming the module and how to plug it all in is exactly the same as this, okay? So, this is what you're gonna get in this vehicle. So this is a 2013 onwards. Like I said, there is two kits on our website, and we do have a graph of which one suits which vehicle, but this is what's gonna come in. You're gonna get two main looms that are plugged into this main remote start module. Now, I should mention this is for all the automatic models only. This will not work for the manual vehicles, unfortunately. So, the manuals can be done, but they're a hard wire installation and you would need a professional store to do that. But, any of you automatic guys out there, you guys get lucky and it is super easy to do. So, you've got your main ignition plug here and then you've got your main immobilizer harness here. And the cool thing about this, because it is plug and play, it won't void any warranty. It doesn't edit or change anything on your car. The firmware is designed for your Honda and it is literally going to read data from your vehicle and allow it to remote start very quickly and easily. So when you come in in summer, like a hot day like this where we're sweating, you know, you can hop in a car and it's going to be nice and cool for you. Or in winter, it's going to be nice and cool, uh, heated up for you, ready to go. So let's show you what we're going to need for this installation. Oh, and I should mention, you're gonna be able to do this from the factory key. So, you know, you're gonna be able to press lock three times, or you can actually get some long range remotes. We do have long range remotes available for these systems on our website at Carbon Car Systems, if you wanted. Now, this is all we're gonna need for this installation. And honestly, you could probably do it for a little bit less, but we're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, you know, some cutters just to cut the cable ties, some cable ties to tie the module and the looms up, you're going to have these plastic non-marring pry bars that's going to make panels easier to get off and we do have these available on our website now they're very very cheap they're only i think 10 11 dollars tester tape which is just a cloth tape but any other tape could do uh, we use this specifically because it is an oem style or original equipment manufacturer style and uh, just a knife uh, in, in order to cut a few things um, such as tape and things like that so it makes life easier but let's show you how to install it and program it very quickly and easily. So, underneath here, you're gonna have one little screw just at the back. There's actually three holes, but there's only a screw in the back, and that is a Phillips head screw. And you're gonna simply undo that anti-clockwise. So let's see if we can get this quickly without looking. There we go, anti-clockwise. Now, a couple of quick tips on this and making life easy is the next stage is to pull the top of the steering shroud off and that will actually just pop upwards. And the way to do that is just pinch from the back and you can actually just pop it. So there you go. And that will lift up and that's very easy. Tuck it out of the way so you're not gonna get any damage. And the next step is take your key, turn it to reds or the on position and turn your steering wheel. Because what you're gonna need is a little screw behind the steering wheel here. And there's one on the driver's side and there's one on the passenger side and they're just gonna undo to be able to take the bottom of the steering shroud off. So, as you can see here, this is gonna be a really, really quick installation. So, I think it's one of the best kits that we've ever designed and we've made it really affordable for you guys out there to be able to do this yourself. So, I'm just doing the passenger side one here. You do have to have the steering, or the ignition on because of the steering lock. You can't turn the steering wheel without the steering lock 
are coming on if you don't have the key inside there. So, you know, once you've done that, you can actually just pull it down and she will come completely off. So you might have to move the little steering lock arm here or the lever just to get it out of the way. Now, there we have it guys. Now, if you want a bit more room, you could pull this paneling off and we probably will pull that paneling off to mount the module and tie it up nice and neat. But we're gonna show you quickly and easily how fast you could actually do this. These are the two looms you're gonna need here. One is the main power ignition loom on the left-hand side here, and the other one is the ignition uh, immobilizer loom, okay? Now, this does not remove any security on your car. It actually retains all your security because it's designed for the vehicle. It just bypasses it during the remote start stage, so you can actually have all your security and uh, it's not gonna change anything for your vehicle. So. Let's show you how to unplug these. But firstly, there's gonna be a white cable tie or any other black cable tie around this section here, just holding that loom up. You're gonna really just cut that off. Uh, we've already looped this one up, but you can cut that off just to give you a bit of room. Secondly, guys, you're gonna to wanna to cut this one here. So that's another cable tie. So that's the second one. You would cut one here, one here, and that's gonna make the loom a little bit looser. And you can actually cable tie those up after you've completed the job to put them back in that factory position, okay? So sorry about the sun glare there on the video, but you can get the idea. Two cable ties, we're gonna cut that, to give us a bit of room. Now to get these plugs off, guys, they're very, very easy. This has just got a little locking tab on the front here, and you're gonna press that and pull the loom out. Very easy, if you want to, you can undo this one to give yourself a bit of room, and you can undo these ones as well, but we're gonna try not to undo anything. On the left-hand side, on the front of this plug, you're gonna press in and up at the same time. So in and pull that up and it'll pop outwards. And that's just a little locking tab. And as you start to remove this plug, it'll pull upwards even more. So let's uh, try and remove that here. There we go. So see that came out a little bit more and that is actually removed. Now, on our main loom here, these are just gonna come cable tied up or a little loom around them. But as you can see, you've got quite a bit of length there to be able to mount your module down the back, but the, the male side into this female is very short there. So we're gonna undo this looming to put it back behind the dash here and make it really, really neat. But basically this is just gonna T-piece in line. You're gonna plug this in here and plug this back into the original loom. But to give us a bit of room, we are gonna untape it. So we are gonna take our knife, slice with the grain here, not against it, just to undo a bit of the tape so that we can always put it back and keep it original. So let's just undo that a little bit. You just gotta be careful not to cut any of the cables, but uh, it's not too hard to do. All right, there we go. So we're actually gonna pull that looming out of there. As you pull it down, you can see we're getting a bit more length. I'm gonna pull this conduit right off. There we go, and we're gonna put it back on it at the end. So that's gonna give us a bit of looming room. And then we're gonna plug in that main harness, okay? So that's gonna be really easy to do. Straight in, make sure your locking tabs all the way out. As you push it in, you'll be able to lock it in place, okay? Now that will loom up like that. In the factory position, we're gonna tie that up nice and neat as well. And as you can see, that's right near the back now. That's gonna loom up really neat. It's gonna look really good. We can actually plug it in now. There we go. And we're gonna tie that up nice and neat behind the dash. But don't forget that we do have this secondary loom to do, and we're gonna do it at the same time. All right, so it's gonna come down like this. It's gonna have this little relay block at the back. We're gonna tape that up nice and neat there later. We put a bit of tape around some of the cables here that you won't need during installation. And there is a little plug here, but don't unplug that. It's just different for different vehicles, but you don't need to worry about that. And it's gonna T-piece in as well. So straight in very very easy to do so plenty of cable there we're going to loom that up quickly nice and neat and put a bit of tape around that and have it run to the back but we're also going to quickly show you how to program it going to tie this up you can see we've started to tape it up and we're going to loom that up right now before we put this module behind but if you have cut that cable tie sometimes it actually stays 
in the vehicle and you can just pop that out you just put your pliers on it and pull that out see that was stuck in there sideways so pull that out then you can put a new cable tie in it through the hole that is actually left there example being up the top here we've done the same thing put the cable tie through I'm going to cable tie that up into the original position and just cut that off so that's going to be nice and neat and we'll do that on the side there once we sort of put these cables behind now and we can make it look really factory and OEM genuine with all the cables out of the way so nothing's going to come loose okay so we've sort of loomed that up nice and neat ready to mount behind the dash and we are going to pull that panel off in just a sec to show some of you guys but like i said every vehicle will be slightly different but you're just going to pop those panels off but let's show you the most important part which is how to program it we're going to look at these lights on the left and right here all we're going to do is turn the ignition to the on position you'll get a red light that will flash green once once it's actually done that you can start the vehicle itself you're going to get a couple more green flashes here and then eventually it will go solid green on both sides and turn off and you'll hear a slight click on the car once that's actually been done the module has been programmed to read the car but now we need to program the speedo or the rev so we know when the starter will release when we remote start this so all you're going to do is hold your hand on the foot brake and on the back of this module is a little button you're going to press that button it'll light up red and then you keep holding the hand on the foot brake or your foot whatever until this goes green okay so you just saw it go green then and that is programmed now that is all you need to do and that will actually remote start now you can actually test it hop out the vehicle hit lock three times in the factory remote make sure it works now let's show you how to do that again quickly for you guys out there if you do make a mistake or you miss a step you can reprogram it so don't sweat all you're going to do is unplug this section this little section here you're going to press and hold the button and plug it back in now as you and keep holding it as you put it plug it back in and if you watch here this will flash red really quickly and release now that's reset it back to the initial programming stage it doesn't change the firmware but it does allow you to program to the car again so you can see the process here again flash green start it goes again two flashes three flashes then solid green on both sides turns off and done again learn the tacker hand on the brake touch the button it'll learn the tack level and look it is as simple as that for learning this, this remote start to the car probably a 10 minute job we're just going to pack it up and tie it away try it quickly make sure it's 100 percent before we do that and like i said if you want you can add long range remotes which are actually plug in on the back here we have a series of about eight different remotes on our website if you want to be able to do it from your house which is going to be longer range than your factory remote control so obviously this remote will only work from the distance that it actually now operates from the car because that's dictated by the honda remote key right. okay guys we're going to remove this panel first there is a little section here that's a little cut out we use our pry bar and you're going to pop that section off and that's going to make it life a little bit easier let's see here if we can get it off there we go there we go very easy we used it we actually leave it the left hand side as well on the back here undo that plug little locking tab again and we can actually pull the rest of this section off as well so all locking tabs very easy to do uh, on the back of this switch here if you have traction control or any other switches that will actually come down and now that will allow us to mount the module behind here and we're going to tie it up nice and neat behind the glove box or behind the um, shroud here or the undercarriage of this of the driver's side and that is going to be our completed job so there you have it guys we're going to quickly tie that up and pack it away so there we go guys we've actually mounted that up behind the dash just be careful there is a lot of sharp metal under the dash if you are going to mount it behind there and the only reason we actually took that panel down is to give us a bit of room to tie that up nice and neat now you can pull all these other panels off but this is very hard to get off this left hand side section so that's why we didn't pull it completely off uh, but we're actually going to put this top section back in completely and we'll quickly show you something on the steering shroud to make life easier when you're putting those back on as well so there you go that's our main paneling on all tied up nice and neat we're going to quickly pull this down pull it out towards us and we're going to put this shroud on but you got to make sure on this left hand side you've got to tuck it up under to make sure it sits properly so we're going to show you that as well so as we're putting this in this is going to push on nice and neat 
And the main thing you have to worry about, actually I'll pull this off and show you, just here on the back of this is a little section, it's a little tab, all right? And that locks in under this tab. And that's all you really got to make sure on this that you're getting in place, because if it doesn't, you won't sit around your key barrel. Very neat, so let's uh, put this on and we'll show you what I'm talking about. So you'll see here, see how that sort of sits off a little bit, guys? All you gotta do is just push it in and under and that'll sit perfectly. So just make sure this sits nice and neat. Put your screws in, pop the cover on, job's completed. Now, just be aware as well on the screws, there is two different styles of screw. So this is the two different styles. These two go on the top of the shroud, this one goes underneath. You can see it's just got a slightly wider pan head on it. Uh, so just be aware of the two different styles there, two different sizes. All right. guys all complete and all you got to do is hit lock three times off the factory remote it will lock the doors for you it will start the car up so you can see it started there it will recheck that the doors are all locked and she's up and running and you can have that running on a hot day like this so you're nice and cool inside as you can see vehicle is locked up and when you come back to it to take it over and drive it away it's going to hit unlock open the door and you can actually just take it over there's no need to start it again all you gotta do is take it, put it in the ignition, turn it once to accessories, once to ignition. Don't go too far because it will kick the starter in again like any vehicle. If you've already got it on and try to start it again, it will grind. So turn it to the ignition, put your foot on the brake and you can just drive it away like normal. From there, if you come up to a stop, just turn it off and she's all like normal. There's no difference to the factory driving of it. Again, if you didn't have a remote started, you could just drive it like normal. One thing to be aware of though, just make sure you've always got your handbrake, um, or your foot brake in this case, or your handbrake on, because the remote start will not work if that is not on. Whilst automatics will not start unless they are actually in park, they actually still need to sense that the uh, handbrake is actually on, or foot brake in this case. So, showing you again, quickly and easy remote start from the factory key, really easy for you guys to do it yourself, literally probably a 10 minute install, plus a little bit of pack up time, and I really think that's one of the best things we've released.